Here's a counting question. How many ways are there to pick numbers A, B, C, D, whose sum is 100, all non-negative, where A is even, B is odd, C is 2 more than a multiple of 3, and D is 3 more than a multiple of 4? This seems like a complicated question, but we're going to see how power series can actually help us in figuring out solutions to things like this. And together with some software like Wolfram Alpha, we'll be able to get explicit numbers for values, even if we change the conditions on these numbers. Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're going to look at how to count with power series. And the question we're going to be motivated by is this question here, where we have positive or non-negative integers a, b, c, d, sum into 100, with these restrictions on each of the individual numbers. Now, before getting into the details of this, I do want to review some facts about power series that are going to be helpful for us when looking at this particular problem. Now, the main thing I want to review is the power series expansion of a series like this, 1 over 1 minus x to a power. Now, for the moment, I'm going to ignore the radius of convergence and think, what ought the power series expansion look like? So say we had the power series expansion looking like this. Now, if you know a little bit about Taylor series, we can actually find out these coefficients using differentiation. But we're going to do something else. What we can do is, for values of x where this is actually holds inside of the radius of convergence, multiply by the denominator here. Okay, now if we expand this and collect terms, we see that the first three terms will have a0, a1, and a2, and then we'll get differences that are three apart. Like we have negative a0 x cubed plus a3 x cubed, and negative a1 x to the fourth plus a4 x to the fourth, etc. So comparing coefficients with both sides, we see this quantity here has to be 1, whereas these two things are 0. And now we have this kind of cascading effect because all of these coefficients have to be 0 comparing both sides. So for example, a3 will be forced to be 1 because a0 is 0, and this is 0, and these are both 0, so a4 and a5 are 0. Since this coefficient is 0 and a3 is 1, that means a6 is 1. So every third term will be a 1 and all other terms will be 0. In other words, the expansion of this will look something like this right over here, where we take every third power and add them up. Another way to see this, is if you're familiar with it, is this is the formula for the sum of a geometric series um, with a common ratio of x cubed. So in general, 1 over 1 minus x to the n has the following power series expansion, 1 plus x to the n plus x to the 2n plus x to the 3n, where all the exponents are powers of, or multiples of, our n that we have as an exponent in the base right over here. Okay, let's see how this can help us to actually solve this original problem of finding the number of quadruples of non-negative integers a, b, c, d that sum to 100 with these conditions right over here. So the idea behind this is what we're going to do is make power series associated to every single one of the variables. And in the power series, we're going to keep track of the possibilities of each variable in the exponents. So for example, the power series we're going to associate with A is a power series that has even numbers of in exponents in the variables in the variable x. So here we'll have a term for x to the 0, since 0 is on even non-negative integer. We'll also have x squared, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, etc. And so this is the series we're going to associate with this number a. Again, keeping track of the possibilities that a has in the actual exponents of the variable. Now it's not clear why we're doing that right now, but we're going to see why this is a good idea to keep track of that in this way in a minute. Let's do the same thing with these other choices. So b has to be an odd number, and so we'll make a power series that has only odd number exponents in it. So we'll have x to the 1, x to the 3, x to the 5, x to the 7, x to the 9, etc. Okay, using that same thing, let's see what we get for these other ones. 2 more than a multiple of 3. So... 2 more than a multiple of 3, 2 is 2 more than a multiple of 3, it's 2 plus 0 times 3, times 3, then we have 2 plus 1 times 3, then 2 plus 
2 times 3, then 2 plus 3 times 3, etc. And then we have a similar thing happening with D, 3 more than a multiple of 4, so numbers like x cubed, x to the 7th, x to the 11th, x to the 15th, etc. And now we're going to see how to use these four power series to get some type of expression that will allow us to determine the number of non-negative integer quadruples that sum to 100. Okay, so I've reminded ourselves that this is a series associated with A, B, C, and D, again keeping track of the possibilities of A, B, C, D, and the exponents. Now the key is to actually multiply all of these power series together. Now let's think about what a prototypical term in the product of this thing is. A prototypical term in the product takes a term from here, multiplies by a term from here, multiplies by a term from here, and multiplies from a term from here. So for example, a term might look like x to the 6th times x to the 7th times x to the 5th times x to the 15th. All right, so let's look at this. Here is our choice for A, here is our choice for B, here is our choice for C, and here is our choice for D, and each of these things actually satisfy our conditions met because we picked our exponents in our series to be that way. Now this term itself is x to the exponent where we sum all these things up, and in this case is 33. So this is an example of one non-negative integer quadruple a, b, c, d, whose sum is 33 and satisfies, and for which all the exponents satisfy the conditions that we demanded of them in the first place. Um, okay, so why is that interesting? Well, if we wanted to know the number of ways to find integer quadruples a, b, c, d that satisfy all these conditions, where the sum is 33, we would be searching for all the possible ways we could expand this and find terms like this whose exponents sum to 33. Or in other words, we'd be looking for the term associated to x to the 33 in this entire expansion when we multiplied it all out. So, the coefficient of x to the 33 in the expansion of this product would actually be the number of non-negative integer quadruples that sum to 33 and, add, and satisfy all of these conditions that are, met, are needed here. So if we're looking for the number of solutions to this where the sum is 100 and we have all these conditions here, then we're looking for the coefficient of x to the 100 in the expansion of this entire product right over here. Now we can simplify our lives a little bit by simplifying the expression we have to deal with here using this thing right over here. So for example, this first series right over here, by what we developed earlier, is 1 over 1 minus x squared. And this series right over here is not exactly the same as this because it doesn't start with a 1 coefficient, but we can pull out a term of x and then we'll get this series right over here. If we factor at x here, we get x to the 0 plus x squared plus x to the 4th plus x to the 8th, etc. So this can be written as x times this thing. So x times 1, x times 1 over 1 minus x squared. We do a similar thing over here, if we pull the x squared term out, we'll get 1 plus x cubed plus x to the 6th plus x to the 9th, etc. And so this series is x squared over 1 minus x cubed. And finally, in this series, if we factor out x cubed, we get 1 plus x to the 4th plus x to the 8th plus x to the 12th. And so we get something like x cubed over 1 minus x to the 4th. Okay, so since the number of solutions to this equation under these conditions, as we talked about before, 
is the coefficient of x to the 100 in this entire expansion is the coefficient of x to the 100 in this expansion right over here. Okay, now we notice there's a, in the numerator here, we have an x to the sixth power, so we can also think of this as the x to the 94th, the coefficient of x to the 94th in the product where we have ones on the numerator instead. We don't have to think about it that way, but that's an option. So now, if we wanted to figure out the number of solutions we're interested in, we can go ahead and go to a program like Wolfram Alpha, plug in these power series right here, and ask for the coefficient of x to the 100, and whatever number we get is the number of solutions that we're interested in. Now you might think, well, okay, well what if I just program this and maybe use some type of like computer program to figure this out for me? Well, the thing that's interesting about this though um, is a few things. One is you can augment these conditions and there's a small change that happens just to the power series. So say instead of having C be two more than a multiple of three, you demand that C is one more than a multiple of three. And if you go to the can the actual power series that encapsulates that, you would be decreasing every single one of these exponents by one. And so in the corresponding power series, this two would just change to a one, and then you can go back to Wolfram Alpha and figure out what the coefficient of x to the 100 is to figure out the number of solutions you're interested in. So this is a really cool technique, and it's the beginning of an area of combinatorics called generating functions. If you want to read more about that, you can search that term online. There's a nice open source book called Generating Functionology that introduces all the power series tools that are used quite a bit in combinatorics. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, click the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications on future videos.